Is this making sense? You are listening to the Wells Report. My name is John David Wells. We are working our way through the Mueller testimony today. It has been it has been a very interesting day. It's been a very, very interesting day. Um, <clears throat> there were a lot of exchanges earlier this morning that were fiery and amazing and Representative Louis Gohmert and Robert S. Mueller III got into a food fight to uh, essentially, um, I guess, for the ages, let's say. Okay? This is what happened earlier today at the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Representative Louis Gohmert talking with, with Robert S. Mueller III. Mr. Mueller, well, first, let me ask a unanimous consent, Mr. Chairman, to submit uh, this article, Robert Mueller Unmasked, for the record. That objection. Now, Mr. Mueller, who wrote the nine-minute comments you read at your May 29th press conference? Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Okay, so that's what I thought. You didn't write it. A 2013 puff piece in the Washingtonian about Comey said basically when Comey called, you drop everything you were doing. It gave examples. You're having dinner with your wife and daughter. Comey calls, you drop everything and go. Uh, it, the article quoted Comey as saying if a train were coming down the track, and I quote, at least Bob Mueller will be standing on the tracks with me. Uh, you and James Comey have been good friends or were good friends for eight for many years, correct? Well, we were business associates. We both started off in the Justice Department about this You were good time. friends. You can work together and not be friends, but you we and were Comey friends. were friends. We were friends. That's my question. Thank you for getting to the answer. Now, before you were appointed as special counsel, uh, had you talked to James Comey in the preceding six months? No. Uh, when you were appointed as special counsel, uh, was President... Uh, Trump's firing of Comey, something you anticipated investigating, potentially obstruction of justice. Okay, get into that. That's the internal deliberations in the Justice Department. Actually, it goes to your credibility, and maybe you've been away from the courtroom for a while. Credibility is always relevant. It's always material, and that goes for you, too. You're a witness before us. Let me ask you, when you talked to President Trump the day before he appointed or you were appointed as special counsel, You were talking to him about the FBI director position again. Uh, Did he mention the firing of James Comey? Not as a candidate. Did he mention the firing of James Comey in your discussion with him? I cannot remember. Pardon? I cannot remember. I don't believe so. You don't don't remember. But if he did, you could have been a fact witness as to the president's comments and state of mind on firing James Comey. Uh, I suppose that's possible. I don't remember. Yeah. So most prosecutors want to make sure there's no appearance of impropriety. Uh, But in your case, you hired a bunch of people that did not like the president. Uh, Let me ask you, when did you first learn of Peter Strzok's animus toward Donald Trump? In the summer of... uh... 2017. You didn't know before he was hired? I, I'm sorry? What did you... you didn't know before he was hired for your team? Uh, no what? Peter Strzok hated Trump. Okay. You didn't know that before he was made part of your team. Is that what you're no, saying? I did not know that. All right. Uh, when did you and first actually... learn? You didn't know before he was hired? I'm sorry? You You didn't know before he was hired for your team? Uh, No, what? Peter Strzok hated Trump. Okay. This is evasion. You didn't know that 
before he was made part of your team. Is that what you're no, saying? I did not know that. All right. Uh, when did you and first acted, learn? When, we, when he did find out, I, I acted uh, swiftly to have him reassigned elsewhere in the FBI. Well, there's some discussion about how swift that was. But when did you learn of the ongoing affair he was having with Lisa Page? About the same time I, okay. I, I learned um, from uh, Strzok. Did you ever order anybody to investigate the deletion of all of their texts off of their government uh, phones? Once we found that uh, Peter Strzok was an author of... Uh, Did you ever uh, may I finish? order... Well, you're not answering my question. Did you order an investigation into deletion and reformatting of their government phones? No, there was an IG investigation ongoing. Well, listen, uh, regarding collusion or conspiracy, you didn't find evidence of any agreement, I'm quoting you, among the Trump campaign officials and any Russia-linked individuals to interfere with our U.S. election, correct? Correct. So you also note in the report that an element of any of those obstructions you referenced requires a corrupt state of mind, correct? Corrupt intent, correct. Right. And if somebody knows they did not conspire with anybody from Russia to affect the election, and they see the big Justice Department with people that hate that person coming after them, and then a special counsel appointed who hires dozen or more people that hate that person, and he knows he's innocent... He's not corruptly acting in order to see that justice is done. What he's doing is not obstructing justice. He is pursuing justice. And the fact that you ran it out two years means you perpetuated injustice. I take your question. Gentlemen's time has expired. The witness may answer the question. I take your question. And that... That is going to ring in the halls of Washington for a while. Plainly, Robert S. Mueller III evading the questioning by Louis Gohmert. Plainly evading it. Refusing to answer, playing dumb, bad. Very, very bad. Devin Nunez. Raisingly ignoring all these red flags. Devin Nunez also had a moment with Robert S. Mueller III. Here it is. Raisingly ignoring all these red flags, as well as the transparent absurdity of the claims they are making, the Democrats have argued for nearly three years that evidence of collusion is hidden just around the corner. Like the Loch Ness Monster, they insist it's there, even if no one can find it. Consider this. In March 2017, Democrats on this committee said they had more than circumstantial evidence of collusion, but they couldn't reveal it yet. Mr. Mueller was soon appointed, and they said he would find the collusion. Then when no collusion was found in Mr. Mueller's indictments, the Democrats said we'd find it in his final report. Then when there was no collusion in the report, we were told Attorney General Barr was hiding it. Then when it was clear Barr wasn't hiding anything, we were told it will be revealed through a hearing with Mr. Mueller himself. And now that Mr. Mueller is here... They are claiming that the collusion has actually been in his report all along, hidden in plain sight. Yeah, okay, so that's Devin Nunez excoriating the Democrat majority of the House of Representatives about all of this. Everything you say, everything he says is true. Indeed, at the end of the testimony this afternoon, Adam Schiff, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, says that because you won't answer, referring to Mueller, and the fact that he would not answer anything beyond the report, because you don't answer, we're going to have to investigate. The answers are all in the report. That Robert S. Mueller III did not answer questions that were beyond the report is immaterial, because he wasn't there to testify beyond all of those things. So what Schiff was trying to do is he was trying to lay a predicate for further investigations of this president, certainly to last to the next in, in election. They're trying to lay the predicate on Robert S. Mueller III. 
Because you didn't answer, we've got to investigate. Like I said, there are holes all through this. It's terrible. It is awful. How many times did Robert S. Mueller III deflect, decline, or defer a question? 111 times earlier this morning. It was awful. Moving on, media coverage reached a fever pitch today. All cable networks and just about everybody else hushed in rapt attention at what Robert S. Mueller III was trying to evade answering. And like I said, it was really ugly. The Hill, Joe Concha, reports it this way. All the major broadcast networks are offering wall-to-wall coverage, including ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC Broadcasting. All the major cable networks, including Fox News, MSNBC, and CNN, will also offer coverage throughout the day. C-SPAN preempted all regular programming to cover Mueller on Capitol Hill. We thank them, by the way, for the use of the sound that we did, that we gave you today. Many of the week's earlier segments were predictive, featuring political and legal pundits speculating, and it's all speculation. A lot of hypothetical, a lot of a lot of just plain speculation on the part of all the members of Congress in their questioning of Robert S. Mueller III. Media frenzy. Chris Wallace, Fox News Sunday anchor, said that former special counsel Robert Mueller's House hearing has turned into a disaster for Democrats and for the former FBI director's reputation. Responding after the first few hours of the hearing before the House Judiciary Committee this morning, Wallace said that Mueller offered little defense of his investigation amid repeated attacks from Republicans. He said Mueller had not put forth much testimony or new information. By the way, I was miscorrecting. I, I'm sorry, I misspoke. I got a. I, I, I've been. I've been misreporting, and this is me getting it right because I screwed up. I've been misreporting that that this testimony was before the House Oversight Committee. It wasn't. It was before the House Judiciary Committee. Please forgive me, Gerald Nadler. You can't tell you can't tell the anti-Trump testimony without a scorecard. I'm very very sorry. I got that wrong. It was the House Judiciary Committee, and it was it was Gerald Nadler, not the House Oversight Committee and Elijah Cummings. I said that earlier today, and I suddenly realized while I was talking about this that oh wait, I've gotten that all wrong this whole this whole morning, this whole day. So please forgive me. Anyway, Chris Wallace saying this. I think this has been a disaster for Democrats. I think this has been a disaster for the reputation of Robert Mueller. He has seemed very uncertain with his brief. He does not seem to know what's in the report. Over and over, Mueller just sits silent and allows attacks from Republicans to sweep over him and says nothing. At one point, he even said he wasn't familiar with Fusion GPS, the opposition research firm behind the Steele dossier. And, of course, the Democrat National Committee, which, by the way, is not written into this particular news story, nor is the Hillary Clinton campaign, but it was the Hillary Clinton campaign, the Democrat National Committee, and Fusion GPS that were the ringleaders behind the Steele dossier, which, by the way, was the predicate for all of these wiretaps against Trump campaign workers and the indeed and indeed the predicate for the Mueller investigation in the first place. Mueller said he was not interested in testifying, and he should have stuck to his guns. He reiterated his testimony before House committees would be based on the text of his report on Russian election interference and potential obstruction of the investigation. Wallace said Mueller's performance raises questions about the degree to which he was actually in charge of the investigation. Fox News contributor Katie Pavlich agreed, arguing she questions whether partisans were the driving force behind the investigation. Gosh knows there were plenty of partisans on that investigative team. Robert Mueller is not doing himself any favors. He looks weak. He does not look strong. He can't answer basic questions about what's in the report. When he's saying the report is what I'm referring to, she argued, adding Democrats are not getting what they wanted out of the hearing. Well, we'll see. We shall see. Other people reporting on this, Josh Fieldman, 
A number of pundits this morning have been questioning former special counsel Robert Mueller's performance. Fox Business host Stuart Varney spoke with Judge Andrew Napolitano as the Mueller hearing got underway. Napolitano says so far it shows Mueller is a good Marine. He's going to follow the instructions of the Department of Justice and basically not talk about ongoing cases, not talk about the deliberations, and not talk about anything outside the report. He said that's bad news for both sides. Democrats want to get into his thinking. Republicans want to question him about the origins of the investigation. So there you go. So what is going on next? Where are we now? I will tell you. The President of the United States is getting ready to leave. He's going to go someplace. I don't know exactly where. He's probably going to speak to the media, and we're going to cover it on the Wells Report. Back with more in a moment. It is a horrible scenario, but it happens. Dennis writes about his wife. She was diagnosed with leukemia. In fact, she's a two-time survivor, and in the midst of all that, they ran up over a million dollars in medical bills. Thankfully... They're MediShare members, and Dennis says they are so thankful for that, how others came together to meet their needs. And that's how so many MediShare members feel. This is not health insurance. It's different. You don't have to pay for things you don't believe in. And like Dennis found out, it just works. So if you join MediShare, not only do you save a lot of money, the typical family saves about 500 bucks a month, but you know where your money's going each month. You're helping people, and if the time should come, they'll be helping and even praying for you. So, yes, it's different, and as more than 400,000 people now know, when it comes to health care costs, different is beautiful. Find out more. Call 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. I used to wonder when I saw people going into nice hotels, really nice hotels, taking a pillow with them. That was before I got on my pillow because I know it doesn't matter where I'm going. Whether I'm going to a one-star, three-star, five-star hotel, my pillow goes with me, whether it's just overnight or whether it's on vacation. And here's the great deal about my pillow right now. The lowest price ever offered on radio or TV, two my pillow premium pillows for 69.98, that's only 34.99 per pillow. The lowest price ever offered on radio or TV. And it's still the same pillow. Great pillow, 60-day money-back guarantee, 10-year warranty, and call them, 1-800-951-8175, or go to MyPillow.com, use promo code USA, click on the two-pack special, and get the best deal you've ever gotten on a good night's sleep when you get a MyPillow. Are you drowning in debt? Are you struggling to make minimum payments? Did you know that on average, a household with at least one credit card struggles with over $15,000 in credit card debt? If this sounds like you, know that it's not your fault. Credit card debt happens to good people. Credit card companies lure you in with low introductory rates and low minimum payments. Before you know it, you're in over your head. National Debt Relief has helped thousands of good people just like you become debt-free with our Debt Reset Program that will dramatically reduce your debt down to a fraction of what you owe. Our Debt Reset Program is customized to get you debt-free in as little as 24 to 48 months with one low monthly payment. If you owe over $10,000 in credit card debt or even personal loans, call 800 270 9490. There are no upfront fees or out of pocket expenses. You don't pay a dime until we succeed. Call now to see how the debt reset program can work for you. 800 274 9490. That's 800 274 9490. 800 274 9490. You are listening to the Wells Report. My name is John David Wells. Our telephone number is 844-RADIO-US. You can join us in the chat room at facebook.com forward slash the Wells Report. We video stream all of our shows. And you are perfectly welcome to join us here. And there is there is a superb conversation going on about all this. I'm asking the people that are involved in this to please join me on the air. Uh, Isaac Tate did earlier today. Mike, my words. I'm, I mark my words. I get it. Okay. Anyway, that's a okay. So, tell you what I'm going to do, Mark. Um, because that's an alias, I'm not going to read your comment. 
If you if you want to call with your real name, then I'll be more than happy to uh, I'll be more than happy to to read your comments or listen to yours. But uh, but you've got <clears throat> but you're using an alias. Jim Lafferty, on the other hand, is a dear friend of mine. He's also a Democrat. The Mueller hearings confirmed what we all know. Trump and his campaign had a dirty and unpatriotic relationship with Russian agents. Just because it isn't illegal doesn't make it right. Trump attempted to obstruct justice and would have been indicted if he were the president. Trump is a big liar, big surprise. Barr is a liar, big surprise. The congressional Republicans are liars by extension of their support for Trump and Barr's lies. Jim goes on to say this. Trump's answers to the written questionnaire were generally untruthful. Gee, big surprise. All right, let me take these things one at a time. <clears throat> Jim. Um, the Trump and his campaign. Okay. Trump and his campaign had a dirty and unpatriotic relationship with Russian agents. By that, I'm I'm assuming that what you're talking about is the... The oh wait hold the president is talking I'm going to join the uh, coverage from Fox News right this very second here on the Wells Report and once again here's the president here is the president here is the president okay I'm trying to get this trying to get this going here why isn't this working. I don't understand why this isn't working, so I'm going to refresh it and hope for the best. The President of the United States speaking to the media. But people see what's gone on in our country with this whole thing. I've been going through it for three years. For three years. All nonsense. So uh, this was a very big day for our country. This was a very big day for the Republican Party. And you could say it was a great day for me, but I don't even like to say that. It's great. I'll tell you what. I very much appreciate those incredible warriors that you watch today on television, Republicans, that defended something and defended something very powerful, very important, because they were really defending our country. More than anything else, they were defending our country. But they were warriors, and they've been warriors for a long time. And everybody knew it was a hoax, especially the Democrats. I wish we could be a fly in the wall in those rooms where the Democrats would go in and talk before and after meetings. And they'd be laughing and smiling and say, can you believe that we're getting away with this? But in the end, they didn't get away with it. Yeah. So there is no such a thing. He didn't have the right to exonerate. And, you know, it's very interesting. People mentioned exoneration. That was something where he totally folded because he never had the right to exonerate. And it was covered very well by Congressman Turner and put to a conclusion. We were, if you take a look at not only the report, beyond the report, Take a look at not what he said, but what he was forced to say. And even your networks and your network and your network and every one of these networks, they put up their hands. You know, we had a couple of cases with, actually we had about six cases where they asked our people, our representatives, television networks, please don't come in tonight. We're not going to be doing much on it. And the reason they're not, because it's over. Go ahead. The President of the United States taking questions from the media. WikiLeaks is a hoax just like everything else. And all of those problems having to do with crime were the biggest hoax of all. It was a witch hunt, a total witch hunt. And when you saw Robert Mueller's statement, the earlier statement, and then he did a recap, he did a correction later on in the afternoon. Yes, he did. That's the President of the United States on the East Lawn of the White House. Getting ready to fly away, talking to the uh, reporters. We'll have as much of it as we can bring you. If he stays past the top of the hour, we'll bring it to you on the Wells Report. This is the USA Radio Network. 
Hi, this is Wayne Allen Root. I have a voice problem. My voice easily gets hoarse. That's a big problem when you're a talk show host. I talk thousands of hours a year on radio and TV. I have to protect my voice. Well, those problems are a thing of the past. My throat is now a workhorse because of my doctor suggests all-natural silver lozenges. I pop these lozenges all day long and all show long. Silver has been used historically to destroy bacteria, viruses, and even yeast. Imagine sucking on a lozenge and letting the silver slowly and consistently destroy the cause of mouth, throat, and respiratory problems. Those lozenges work. I'm living proof. They're a miracle for me. Now a more advanced silver formula is available in a liquid gel or lozenge form, and you can get all three in one package at 20% off because war sent you. My doctor suggests the name of the company, but Wayne Root doesn't suggest. I urge you to try these remarkable all-natural lozenges today. Call 866-660-9868. That's 866-660-9868. Or go to mydoctorsuggest.com slash root. Use promo code USA Radio to save 20% off. That's mydoctorsuggest.com slash root. 